Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been a hot minute since I've done one of these riding and talking videos, but there's something that's been on my mind that I want to talk to you guys about as well as get your opinion on. So you might have noticed that my past couple of videos have all been off-roading adventures. And I have to say, ever since getting my e-bike, I've been discovering this new passion of mine. It's just a ton of fun and something that I've been really enjoying. And since I got my e-bike, two of my friends have also picked up bikes. The first one got an Onyx. I tried to do some off-roading with him, but let's be honest, the Onyx is not great at off-roading, and he wasn't really a fan of it. But my second friend picked up an Aerial Rider X-Class, which has 4-inch wide knobby fat tires, and he actually really enjoyed doing off-roading with me. There's even a trail right beside me, and I'm telling you guys, if you've never done it, Taking a high-powered e-bike or even just a regular motocross bike on trails, it's super fun. But this new discovery of mine has led me to reevaluate my bike to better optimize it for these trail riding conditions. So of course on this bike I have a 2000 watt hub motor, and hub motors are a great all-around option, especially for road riding like this. It's just that for trail riding, hub motors, they can definitely do it, watch my past couple of videos, but they're just not ideal because the gear ratio isn't uh, optimized for it, as well as the motor is a bit more susceptible to damage because it's in the wheel and trails are extremely rough. The reason why I have a hub motor to begin with is because mid-drive motors are great, they're very high quality, but the most powerful one you can find is the Bafang mid-drive and it's like a thousand watts, 52 volts, and for me that's just really weak and I wanted something with more power. And that leads me to the discovery that I'm kind of ashamed to say, but I just came across it now. And what it is, is there's two separate brands that make very powerful mid-drive e-bike motors. First one is from CYC, and they have two offerings. One is 1500 watts, and the other one is 5000 watts. Plus, they're compatible with 72 volt batteries. So that's an immense amount of power. And the second option is actually from Lunacycle, which if you're not familiar, they are the ones that sell the Suron in North America. And they have a couple mid-drive motors. They actually sell a custom, like, tuned uh, Bafang mid-drive motor to get slightly better performance out of it. But the one I'm really interested in is a Cyclone brand, and it's 3,000 watts. And again, it's compatible with a 72 volt battery. So now since I know these things exist I'm really tempted to put them on my bike just to enable me to ride a bit better on these trails so I did a lot more digging I watched basically every video on these two motors on YouTube and let me tell you there's not a lot to watch but from what I gathered the CYC motor is a very good all-around complete package the thing I like about the CYC is that the controller has a spot right next to the motor there's like a little bit of a tray right where it mounts and that's gonna make the whole cable management situation a lot more uh, easy. The one from Lunacycle, the motor itself is a little bit bigger, and the controller is pretty huge. It's about the same size as the controller I have right now, and my bike right now isn't super pretty by any means. You guys can be the judge, though. So I would like to have a motor option that combines the controller just to clean up my bike a little bit. However, there is one gigantic I would say deal breaker with the CYC motor, and that's the noise that it makes. If I had that installed right now, all you guys would hear is a super high-pitched whine. Now, in comparison to that, the Cyclone from Lunacycle, it does make a noise. I mean, even my hub motor makes a noise, but it's way more tolerable, and I think you would get used to it really fast. I do have to admit that I really like the ASI 855 controller, and that's very well integrated with the CYC option. I did as much digging and research as I could, but I didn't see any resources on combining the Cyclone motor with that ASI 855 controller. If those two are compatible with one another, then I think the Cyclone is the clear winner in my book. So yeah, that's what's been on my mind lately because I've been falling in love with trail riding and I guess I could just pick up a Suron. Uh, it's definitely a bit more expensive, but the Suron is a very capable machine for really all kinds of uses. I also like how the Suron comes with an option which is like 500 additional dollars, but you can get it with a belt drive. 
because an issue I've been seeing with these very high-powered mid-drive motors is that they chew up chains. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. The insane amount of torque can go through chains pretty quick. And even if it doesn't break the chain, I hear that the chain falls off a lot. But because of that, I think if I do upgrade to one of these mid-drive systems, I'm going to look and see if it's possible to upgrade my bike to a belt drive instead. That, of course, will take away the gears and the derailleur, which is a point of failure. But in order to get the gears back, you can actually get an internally geared hub. And from what I saw, those are way more reliable than a derailleur anyway. But yeah, that's the talk for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, you're still watching, you guys know what to do. Leave a like, subscribe. And if you're knowledgeable on this topic, leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on this whole situation. And let me know if you think I'm better off just biting the bullet and buying a Suron. I've been looking on the used market for a good deal on a Suron, but those are few and far between. But with that said, I'm going to go now and I'll see you guys in the next one.